Welcome to an introduction to the six basic quadric surfaces. The goals of this video are to define a quadric surface and also to give an example of the six basic quadric surfaces. After this introductory video, we'll take a look at each of the six basic quadric surfaces in more detail. A quadric surface is given by a degree two equation in the following form. However, in my set of videos, we won't be dealing with the rotation of these quadric surfaces, so we won't see equations with an xy term, xz term, or a yz term. The six basic types of quadric surfaces are the ellipsoid, the hyperboloid in one sheet, the hyperboloid of two sheets, the elliptical cone, elliptical paraboloid, and the hyperbolic paraboloid. The degree and sign of the terms, as well as which terms are present, determine which of the six quadric surfaces is given. When it comes to graphing a quadric surface, it's often helpful to graph the xy, xz, and yz traces. These are the intersections of the surface with the three planes in the xyz coordinate system. To determine the xy trace, we'll set z equal to zero. To determine the xz trace, we'll set y equal to zero. And to determine the yz trace, we'll set x equal to zero. And we'll take a look at this in much more detail in the next several videos. Here is the form of the quadric surface that creates what's called an ellipsoid. And here are the characteristics. All three degree two terms are present. All three degree two terms are positive when the equation is equal to positive one and all three traces are an ellipse. Let's take, let's take a look at another graph of this ellipsoid. Here it is again. If we take a look at it looking down on the xy plane, as we see here, we see the shape is an ellipse. If we take a look at it from the xz direction, it's also an ellipse. If we take a look at it from the yz direction, Again, it's also an ellipse. So this is what we're talking about when we refer to the different traces of the quadric surface. This is the ellipsoid. Now let's take a look at the hyperboloid of one sheet. Here's the equation in the most general sense. Notice all three degree two terms are present. However, two of the degree two terms are positive as we see here for the x squared and y squared term, but one of the squared terms is negative as we see here for the z squared term. Now, it doesn't always have to be the z squared term that's negative, but two are positive and one is a negative. For a hyperboloid of one sheet, one of the traces will be an ellipse, two of the traces will be hyperbolas, and the axis is parallel to the negative variable. So here we see a negative z squared term, and the axis for this is parallel to the z axis. Let's take a closer look at this graph as well. So again, one trace is an ellipse, as we see in this case looking at the xy plane. If we take a look at the xz trace, we look something like this. We can see the hyperbola here and here. If we take a look at the yz trace, in this case, it's also a hyperbola. This is a hyperboloid of one sheet. Let's take a look at the hyperboloid of two sheets. Notice all three degree two terms are present, but now two of the degree two terms are negative and only one is positive when the equation is equal to positive one. So if we have two negative terms, it's going to be a hyperboloid of two sheets. And again, we have two traces that are hyperbolas and one trace that is an ellipse. Now the elliptical trace may not be in the exact plane, but it will be parallel to the third plane. And the axis will be parallel to the positive term, meaning in this case, the axis is parallel to the z axis because the z term is positive. Let's take a closer look. Here it is, notice the xy trace we're looking down on the xy plane, we see an ellipse. Looking at the xz trace in this direction here, we see the hyperbola as well as in the yz trace, as we see here. This is the hyperboloid of two sheets. 
Next, we have the elliptical cone. Again, notice all degree two terms are present, where two of them are positive and one of them is negative, but now the equation is equal to zero. We have two traces that are hyperbolas and one trace that is an ellipse, and the axis is parallel to the negative variable. Here's the graph of the elliptical cone. Again, in this case, the xy trace is elliptical. The xz trace is a hyperbola, and so is the yz trace. This is the elliptical cone. Next, we have the elliptical paraboloid. Notice now there are only two degree two terms and one degree one term. Here the z term is degree one, but again it doesn't have to be the z term, it could be the x or the y term that's degree one. Two traces will be parabolas and one trace will be an ellipse. And the axis will be parallel to the degree one variable. Here's the elliptical paraboloid, notice the Notice in this case, the xz trace is a parabola, as well as the yz trace, and the xy trace is elliptical. This is the elliptical paraboloid. And the last one we'll talk about is the hyperbolic paraboloid. Notice again, there are two degree two terms, where now one is positive and one is negative and there's one degree one term. One trace is a hyperbola and two traces are parabolas. And the axis is parallel to the degree one variable. In this case, the xz trace is the parabolic trace as well as the yz trace. Notice one parabola opened up and one opens down and the xy trace, as we see here, is hyperbolic. This is the graph of the hyperbolic paraboloid. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, we'll take a look at each of these individually in the next six videos. Thank you for watching.